Good afternoon, everyone. As head of business development for Vodafone IoT, Phil Skipper is fully responsible for developing IoT solutions and capabilities on a global basis. Phil has a wealth of experience in a broad range of industries, including defense, FMCG, and media. Please join me in welcoming Phil Skipper. Right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Firstly, thank you for making the time to come and listen to what I'm going to say this afternoon. Um, I'm the head of IoT strategy for Vodafone's IoT business, and we connect around 75 million devices worldwide today. And that ranges from cars to planes to little gadgets that you have in your pocket. Um, but we've focused purely on the IoT. And what I want to do today is to spend just a little bit of time talking to you not about what we do, but what's actually coming down the line with this evolution between the 4G networks that we all currently run and you have in your pockets today and the new technology around 5G. Now, I've been delighted to come to this event um, because every single event I seem to go to has 5G plastered everywhere and people are talking about massive MIMO and 5G this and 5G that. And it's actually quite refreshing to come to an event which is really about how those technologies are being used because at the heart of it, we're an enabler of digitization. Um, and we do that across multiple industries. So what I'm going to talk to you today is not about what it is you can buy right now today because you've got 4G for most of your IoT services you need, but really to focus a little bit around what's coming to give you a view as to how 4G will merge into 5G and then what comes after that. So that's really the purpose of, of, of the conversation. Um, you'll find that I'm not going to talk a lot about the technology. What I am going to talk about are the business outcomes that actually get driven by these new technologies. Now, I'm going to press the button, and I hope this moves us forward, because we should always think about moving forward. So um, did that work, or did it not work? Hey, look at that. Fantastic. Um, so firstly, and we're going to talk about latency a little bit later on. So if this was connected by 5G, we wouldn't have these types of problems. Um, 5G is something which I think many of you actually heard of. We're finding that as a, as a new technology, it's not particularly well understood. So I'm just going to try and identify where 4G becomes 5G, what's included in 5G, and how, as industrial users of connectivity, you can benefit from it. Now, we've got a strong position in, in that 4G and 5G are evolutionary. So you're not going to see the sort of step change you had between, for instance, 3G and 4G that required a new infrastructure. This is about seamlessly moving from one technology to another. Um, and we're going to show a little few examples. So don't worry, you're not going to have to listen to me all the time. There will be some videos to, uh, to break up the monotony. But as 4G is around, everyone has it today, there's a range of really interesting services that you can get from 4G+. And if I give you some examples of how we've already deployed 4G, it's already providing internet services in cars, it's already connecting many different devices in asset management, so there's a lot you can do with 4G right now. Um, so 5G is coming, but 5G is an evolution, so the strong message is don't stop what you're thinking about in IoT because 5G is coming. Continue what you're doing on 5G, and you can move seamlessly across from 4G to 5G, and that will just give you increased performance. And we'll show you a little couple of, of things about that later. Now, what does 5G actually bring you? It brings you a number of quite interesting assets. The first is increased bandwidth. Now, this is becoming very, very important because the increased bandwidth is combined with greater density of connections. Now, you know, we listen to the analysts, and there could be anywhere between 10 billion and 60 billion IoT connections in the world by pick a date 2028. What that means is the density of IoT devices within a specific location would increase. When you actually look at how the consumption of consumer services is going up in terms of video uh, and data, 
having the capability to have more bandwidth in one place is actually very, very relevant for the IoT business. Um, the second one is, if you look at it, the 5G standard also includes low power wide area networks. So whilst we've got a 4G service and a 5G service, which is predicated on high bandwidth um, and the ability to have great density, it also includes technologies for very low power devices, which have incredibly deep penetration. So you've now got this interesting model where you've got high bandwidth video services, high bandwidth capability, combined with low bandwidth, high penetration sensors. And this is predominantly, sorry, you're clicking the wrong button. The right one is the biggest one in the center. Um, the right one is the big, uh, that's, it's, it's that one. That's the one I am pressing. Um, so we've got this interesting um, blend of connectivity. So the name of the game for us is to connect anything, anywhere with the most appropriate technology for the application. And that's a real step forward in terms of how IoT can be deployed. Now, these types of technologies, 4G and MBIoT, are available now. MBIoT is deployed in a host of different applications. Um, I happen to have one in my pocket. This is just one that we, we use. It's a device that is a PIR, plus a humidity sensor and temperature. It has a lifetime of somewhere between 15 and 20 years. And it's designed primarily to go, um, this use cases to go in toilets, so you can see the occupancy in toilets. So a really simple solution that's available now, and it drives massive efficiency. So you know, the world of IoT is changing. We're accessing application areas that we've never been able to access before with 2G and 3G, and we're getting prepared for the massive IoT that is coming just around the corner as these devices get connected. Now, the second major evolution in 5G um, is latency. So the services that you can get on 5G will be delivered much, much quicker. So you've now got this interesting combination of high bandwidth and low latency. And that means that you can start to do services um, in a way that we've never actually managed to do before. Um, this is about providing data to people on the spot in incredibly high definition and also making it a, a, make, giving them the ability to interact with the data that's actually being delivered. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a video um, in a minute. Uh, the big right-hand button. We've spoken about MBIoT. Um, and these are just some examples in terms of earthquake monitoring, energy properties, smart agriculture. These are all live applications that we support on MBIoT right now today globally. Now, the nice thing about MBIoT, just to give you a little bit of a, a hint on that, because it runs on the same LT network, it also benefits from all the security and the investment that you get from a network which is actually supported by a mobile operator, um, where we're investing not only for IoT, we're investing for consumer and we're investing for enterprise. Now, this idea of a lot of data um, and low latency enables us to actually do some things which are actually quite revolutionary. What I'm going to do today is to just quickly run a video which shows our first holographic call on 5G. So if you think 5G is many, many years away, it's actually not the technology is there, it's already being deployed. Um, and I'm going to let one of my colleagues, Scott, talk um, to give me a, a rest, but we're going to show a little bit of what this actual video um, and this video calling, this holographic calling, actually looks like. So uh, bear with me. I trust that this will work. Back in April, we did our first live test 5G call. Today, I'd like to build on that to show you what we can really achieve. Today, we're going to be calling somebody really special in our Manchester base. This call is going to be the UK's first holographic call live using 5G, so super exciting. Joining us is Manchester City and England football captain Steph Houghton. Hello Steph. Hello, are you okay? Hey, it's great to be able to see you. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. I'm overwhelmed that I can see you, absolutely amazing. Iris has travelled all the way from London today. She's a massive Manchester City and England football fan. Hi Iris. Hello. Hello Iris, how are you? 
must be amazing to be a captain. What skills do you think it requires? First and foremost, you've got to work hard, but also be there for your teammates, both on and off the pitch. I hope everyone in the room can see the power of our emerging technology and some of the fantastic experiences we can create. Thank you. So that was just a, a quick example of how this bandwidth and low latency of 5G is actually there today and can be used. Now, it, what's the relevance of, of this in the industrial space? We're already doing things where we're letting complex machines actually engage in holographic pilots like this. So people who are working on the machines can actually get three-dimensional information in front of them to enable to work in complex machines or in hazardous areas much more safely. So we're already seeing, even though the technology is still so young, a whole load of applications that can be enabled simply by having access to more data in a shorter period of time. Now, if you look at where we are in terms of the technology, this is a good example of how you get more data. Now, there's a second thread which comes into the conversation um, where IoT I'm just going to... Fantastic. Now, because we've got high density, we've actually got low latency, and there's one other component that 5G brings, and that's quality of service. Now, for the very first time, and I think this is the real revolution around 5G for IoT, you've got the ability to take the network from being just about data to actually being about control. So, as a control engineer by trade, my ability to predict how the network is going to perform is actually really, really important. The combination of bandwidth, low latency, and quality of service enables you to start thinking about taking control to the cloud. And it's coincident, of course, with the arrival of edge computing and cloud computing, which gives you the ability to decentralize the control architecture over multiple different devices. So for IoT, not only do you have the benefit of data, you also have the benefit of being able to drive control. And I'm going to show you a video just to show you exactly what I mean, because you know, people go, yeah, yeah, but I exactly how, how does that actually work? So this is a video um, that we made um, earlier in the year. So I, I don't think, you know, the only, I like that video a lot. The only thing I'd say at the end is this isn't about how we rethink logistics. I think it really is about how we rethink IoT going forwards. So having a look at that, that's just a really good example of how you can use the technology to move IoT from a data to a control network. Now, this doesn't come for free, and I'm not talking about the investments that all mobile operators will make in 5G. This actually requires a lot more thought about how you're going to do it. Now, we've got customers that are already planning 5G into their systems. If you are large-scale manufacturers in automotive, um, you need to start thinking about this right now. You need to start thinking about planning for it. You need to start thinking about the evolution of it. If you're thinking about buildings, greenfield sites, if you're thinking about um, new products and services, you, this is not what you're going to be using today, but there's two things. One is, how do you plan for the future? And the second one is, are you ready to actually digitize the business around the types of services that 4G, 4G+, Plus, and 5G will bring you? And I think for, for us, um, when we actually look at the, the capabilities that it brings, the cost and the thinking that you need to think about is the reliance on connectivity 
and IoT will increase as your business digitizes. Quality of service becomes one of the key differentiators in making sure that if you're reliant on IoT, um, that your business is digitized around IT, IoT, that you get the services and the capabilities that you need, not only in the country you operate, but also in the countries where you're likely to sell products and services. Now, this is a learning that we've gathered over many years working in the automotive industry. Automotive companies manufacture centrally and they distribute worldwide. They want the same level of service irrespective of where they're actually based and where their customers buy the product. So when we think about this new dedicated network, it can be deployed in a number of different ways based on quality of service, either as a private network or a national network using defined levels of quality. There's a whole bunch of new targeted services that industries can have, which are different to how we do it today. And again, it's the new pricing models. How would you see this? How would you charge for it? How would you manage an ecosystem that is going to be significantly more complicated than you have today? So the advice is really you know, have, a, have a look, understand what's happening, what's happening in the world of telco. See how it's moving along. See how that could affect your business. And then I think you know, think about the outcome you want and then come and engage early because this is not something that you'll do overnight. So, if I were, so quality of service is going to become the key differentiator going forwards. And if you look at you know, the latest legislation for e-call, you press the e-call button, you may press it once every 10 years, but that message has to get through. This idea of quality of service is something you need to build into your thought so you understand what it is you actually need, how you're going to deploy the technology, and what it's actually going to do for you. What is the outcome you want rather than the technology input that's being supplied? We can sort the technology for you. That's not the, the, the challenge. The question is, do you have the right adoption model, and can you actually deploy it appropriately across your business, whatever vertical you're actually in? So the 5G is a natural evolution of 4G. But I think what's actually important is for IoT, that has the potential to revolutionize how we look at IoT, how we use IoT, how we deploy it, and what we use IoT for. And I think you know, the slogan is going from 4G as a, con as a data network to 5G as a control network. If you keep that in your mind, I think it will help you really get a view of to what the real benefit of 5G is in the IoT landscape. So I think if you look at things that we're, you know, if, if you were to consider the, the, the messages that we have, I think 4G is available now, MBIOT is available now, it's available globally, it runs in licensed spectrum, it's safe and secure. Um, don't stop doing what you're doing in IoT now. Look ahead to the future and look ahead to 5G and consider what benefits that would bring you. How do you factor that into your long-term roadmaps? And then Think about the outcomes you want and engage early. 5G is not something that's available today. If you want to buy it from me today, I have to say no. But it does open up a completely different set of use cases for IoT. And I think that's really what you need to bear in mind when you look at these new technologies. Now, um, everyone says you should close whatever you do on a, um, on a bit of a slogan. And somebody said to me, well, what is this evolution of telco space around and you know where does IOT fit and I thought well actually look when we started off in the world of IOT we had WAP which was the first way we could transmit data and I thought that's a bit like Thunderbird 1 um, it's a really good idea but it only has one person in the cockpit Thunderbird 2 was the heavy lifting device um, that's what most of IOT is based on today nobody really understood what Thunderbird 3 did it just went up to space and didn't actually do much else that's 3G. LTE, 4G, took us to places we don't know. So that's really about how do we actually get to places using MBIOT. And if you remember, Thunderbird 5 was the one up in the cloud. Thunderbird 5 controlled things in a way that had never been controlled before. Look at 5G like that, and I don't think you'll go wrong. So that was really all I wanted to say about 5G. Um, thank you for your time and attention. I know it's late in the afternoon. It's been a long day. Um, but I think um, if you've got any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. But thank you once again for your time and attention this afternoon. Thank you.
So, does anyone have any questions? Um, I don't know what the drill is, but if anyone's got any questions, I'll be more, more than happy to take them. He said, looking out. No, okay, that's fantastic. If you want me, I'll be here for a few minutes, but again, thank you very much for your time and attention. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.